presented in 464 and 808. Um, and it is coming to the point where I think we need to try to decide as a committee what direction we want to go on these issues. Um, and so we've teamed these bills up together uh, to intentionally allow us to have a conversation not only about uh, policy and whether we think there's a reason why we need to make a change in, for instance, use of foreign policy, uh, but also um, issues around training, um, training in cultural awareness, training in de-escalation, um, and of course issues around uh, data collection so that we have the information at hand in order to understand what, um, what the experience of Vermonters in their interactions with law enforcement is, is about. What's the bill? 464 or 808, is that what you're asking? Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Thanks, are you being our legislative council now? He's trying, but I don't think he's so good. <laughs> How do you do that? Do you have one of those split I'll work screen? on it. I'll work on it. Yeah, can you, yeah, can you do a split screen thing on both ups side by side? You side by side? Uh, it's been a while. Right. Do you do you really? Are you just being a wise guy? I think he's being a wise guy. Um, I, I think we need to look at the, the language right now. I think we need to have a discussion about um, what we've heard what we think makes sense and what we want to uh, begin to move forward with in terms of getting language on the page. So this is just an opportunity to have some open discussion. <clears throat> Jim. So uh, we've had obviously a lot of testimony and, and a lot of different viewpoints, but the first part on the data collection, is it was it my understanding that we have this information, but it just doesn't go to this group, the, the, the E? That that's already collected, but not necessarily shared? Is that? Maybe I can call a friend in the room. Lifeline. <laughs> <laughs> got a friend in the room? like a lifeline. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Much I'm not sure. Who would you like to call? I would like nobody in this room. <laughs> My friend from the state police. Sure. Tell, tell me your question again. Okay. So, my I thought my understanding was that the E, the underlying part, was already. Um, noted somewhere on different reports, but not necessarily given to this group that's looking at all the data. Okay. So um, that is not one of the mandatory bits of information that's captured at traffic stops in the traffic stop data currently, right? There are, I think, five or six required age, gender, reason for stop. So all those things, uh, whether a search is connected, but use of force at a traffic stop is should be co is collected by our department in a separate way. It's not part of the data collection effort tracking racial demographics of okay. traffic stops. We are collecting uses of force at all levels, whether it's traffic stop or somewhere else. I cannot speak for other departments about their. Um, collection of uses of force. Wouldn't that be pretty, I don't know, common sense standard that yes. you, anytime you have a use of force, local police, sheriff, state police, that you would note that somehow? Yes. Okay. So I guess my question would be how big a deal and is there any harm? Um, to share in this as part of this report, this collection? You know, just off the cuff, I would say that it, it should be being collected. I don't know that this is the, the best place where it should be collected, but it should definitely be collected. In my personal opinion, every department should be collecting use of force data. Um, whether it's on the ticket or else, I mean, the traffic stop is 
not, it's just one instance where force could be used. Um, Do you have any uh, thoughts on data? <clears throat> Since we're on data right now. Yes, um, I, I did meet with uh, Representative Donahue, and we came up with some additional language um, in E that we were just looking at. Um, we were concerned about the means by which the stop was achieved, and whether a chase might have been involved for achieving the stop, and some other language around um, use of force, whether it resulted in bodily injury or deadly force. So there's some additional language we thought might be added to that section. And this pertains to just roadside stop data, um, but I think we, the way you're understanding um, in the broader context of putting both of these bills on the table, that some of the issues are are not around a roadside mm -hmm. stop, but um, but around other interactions with law enforcement that <clears throat> that we may want to collect data on. I think, we, I think we would want to. I think we would want to broaden the data collection to be other interactions um, and the use of force on that. Bob, yeah, I shoot a lifeline question also. Yeah. If you're if you're on foot or in your car or anywhere, if you do an attempt to evade, it comes out as a separate charge, right? You're on foot or in a car and you attempt to elude or you don't respond to the lawful orders. Is that a charge? Is that a charge? Yeah, sort of. Is that it's kind of a backdoor way of asking if that data is already kind of available in uh, a lot of situations? I mean, I would think the majority of the time if you attempt to elude, but there is some discretion there. It's not, if you can't say for sure that every time. There's a decision made to go another route. I think you're attempting to lose, and you're caught, and your DWI may be your only charge with DWI. It's, it's, there is some discretion. Other conversation about data collection. We, we also um, spoke to including language around collecting data um, for, um, for a person acting in a manner that created reason to believe a mental health crisis was occurring. And, and that's specific language from other statutes around mental health, okay, or mental health counseling. Mm -hmm. um, but that kind of data needs to be specifically named. And finally, the, the thought was that this data report sh shall be reported annually to the legislature, in addition to the council. But, I have some concerns about trying to capture more data when the data that we have that we're getting currently, we don't have any consistency in how we capture it or report it. Isn't aren't aren't we just gonna go through an exercise that really isn't gonna do what we want it to do? Asking this question too, just sort of throwing it out there, because because even the local, because this isn't we're talking local and everybody, um, 
and, and we don't really have a, a good, robust process in place even now for the data work. It's supposed to be a capture. I think we heard that it's an evolved process, that the first year they tried to collect, they had something certain handwritten on the back of the envelope mm -hmm. sort of thing. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So this is definitely an evolving process. Um, and shining some light on it and also uh, putting into statute exactly what we want to be collecting is the opportunity that we have before us right here. Other discussion on that? <clears throat> some way to uh, to incorporate some of the issues around um, people who are in the parent mental health crisis. Um, and so I think probably what we should do is uh, is actually get with Ledge Council and see if we can get some bill language on the, mm -hmm. in front of the committee to I, take a look at this. I would have to see the language, but I'm inclined not to support that. I think that's way too broad, personally. Let's see what it looks like. Anything else on data? All right, so we have um, training in de-escalation and cross-cultural awareness uh, as two concepts that were Put forward in the bill. Uh, any committee discussion on that? Any thoughts that you have based on what we've heard for testimony this far? Just to clarify, what do we have for policy in this area today? Anything? Well, I wish I had that off the top of my head. Well, there's a lot. Use of force, obviously. I think we had some testimony that there is some training, yeah. and I forget how many hours of training off the top of my head. Four. I think they said four hours. Yeah. Small number. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were looking to double it. Mm -hmm. One of them was looking to double it to eight. But, but I'm more specifically on the policy before we get into the So that, that's a separate issue. Right. Um, directing the creation of a policy yeah. around use of force uh, is a different question but, than yeah. training in, in those. Right. Yeah. yeah. But, you want I, mean, I, I think it's a, a, a two-step process. You have a policy and then you train to the policy. But trying to understand what do we have for policy in this area today. I want to assume we have policy surrounding use of force um, and, and some type of de-escalation, but I, I, maybe the major can help me again. <laughs> and, and is it, is it do different agencies have different policies? as opposed to this One. legislature You're right. You're right. directing a unified policy mm -hmm. on when it's okay. That's a good point.
coming to the site. Okay. So for Ross State Police recruits in the three basic phases, it's just BSP, 16 hours of less than lethal or non-lethal use of force training, 26 hours of firearms training, two hours of fair and impartial policing training, basic training for all law enforcement in Vermont, 36 hours of firearms training, 46 hours of less than lethal use of force, eight hours of communication and de-escalation, four hours of use of deadly force, four hours of um, capsicum spray, less, you know, less than lethal use of force, eight hours of working with people in a mental health crisis, four hours of fair and impartial policing, four hours of community policing, four hours of responding to hate-motivated crimes. In the post-basic for all law enforcement, there's 16 hours of taser certification, two hours of team two mental health crisis and de-escalation training, 20 hours of firearms training, 28 hours of I'm sorry, that's, this part is just for state police. 28 hours of less lethal use of force training, 20 hours of firearms, and two hours of team two mental health crisis. And then for VSP, eight hours of fair and impartial policing. And then in service for VSP only, four hours non lethal use of force training, 12 hours firearms training. And ongoing, the average trooper um, per year attends, uh, average 30 troopers per year attend an eight hour updated class for two. And I can print this for you and then you'll just have it in front of you. That's actually not a bad idea. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, that's, uh, so that's great. Out on the page. Oh. Well, that's a lot of non use of force training. What sort of form does it take? I'm sorry, say again. The uh, non-use of force training, it's a lot of time. What sort of form does it take? Is it out in the uh, backyard playing karate, or is it classroom instruction on? So I would, I can't recite it exactly. I think it's a combination of practical, so control procedures, how to make um, high-risk car stops, how to use the escalation tactics, how to go hands-on if you need to with using other than your firearm. So it's a combination of classroom and in the field. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, I'm Madam Chair, if I may just add something to that. That's part of what the move on now is to increase, <coughs> excuse me, increase the basic training another four weeks. As part of that additional four weeks is to provide much more training in this and the use of force and de-escalation. And that use of force, de-escalation are actual hands-on practical exercises where the police officer is actually trying to a scenario where they the major can correct me if I'm wrong in this, but thrown into a scenario and, and, and the uh, officer is or trooper in the case of state police is required to evaluate the situation, take the appropriate actions, and, and they're graded on that at the academy. And, and just for the record, the municipalities, <clears throat> most municipalities, unless you're very large, and I can only assume that happens to be very large, like maybe a BPD or something, don't receive as much training as the state police do in this. Because they have a, a pre-basic and I believe your, your post-basic is a little more intense and they receive a little additional, they receive more training. So this additional, I mean, if we get off a little subject here, but we're getting this additional four weeks, so this is the uh, municipal department is greatly and, and uh, requiring more time. I just wanted to have a son of that. 
so while we're talking about training, is there anything that you, committee, have heard during testimony that makes you uh, that makes you feel inclined to specify something with respect to training? Well, just to pick up on what JP just shared, it, it, I remember there was some reference to training trainer um, approaches, and it didn't seem like there were many of them. So how might you increase that in a way to allow some of the smaller agencies to have more exposure to training? Is that all? I mean, I think the challenge that I've seen just in, in all of the discussion that we've had around all of these issues is that, um, you know, there's probably a wide difference in the way that Vermont State Police handle some of these interactions versus some of the small municipal agencies. And, um, and yet we're, you know, we're being asked to consider law enforcement as a whole uh, because we recognize that our community members who, uh, who have interactions with our local law enforcement uh, may be experiencing different things than what they experience when they are pulled over by a trooper on the highway. Any other questions? supposed to be based on a policy that we don't know what it is now because they're going to have to draft it based on this bill. And the, I guess my question is, is there might be a cost to that, mm -hmm. which would be unknown. So all of our municipalities. Right. I mean, should it be more that, you know, the training council should come back to the General Assembly with a recommendation on training? I'm just... Because, I mean, it puts, it's a difficult situation is they have to they come up with this policy, a model policy, and then they're supposed to take training on that. But we don't know what the model, model policy is at this point. And, I mean... Do you get an A? Yeah. I mean, I, I agree with the policy issue. I mean, I, I agree with that. I mean, four hours to put in the bill is four hours. I don't know what four hours gives you. Maybe it should be two hours. Maybe it should be eight hours. Um, and I think until we get a recommendation from, you know, having a policy and then the recommendation of the folks that do the training that was required to implement that policy, I think might be premature. Plus, there is budgetary concerns, and there's been a lot of discussion whether we go to 16 weeks to 20 weeks, and does this tip it to the 20 weeks, which is has a huge budget. It may be good, and we may have to spend that money, but I would think um, we ought to know that. Saying okay, we need four more hours. And 
and if I might, uh, I agree 100% with what President uh, Dan has said. The, the, um, if the Federal Just Training Council, who has the ultimate responsibility for setting training requirements for all foreign police officers in the state of Iraq, if they come up with a policy, a specific policy, give us some actual hard data, expectations of what the, the cost might be, the type of training you're going to receive and everything. And, and I have to say that, you know, having, having been a retired police officer, for all the years I spent, and most of them are on the road, uh, four hours is not enough for what we're looking at here. So it's going to require additional training to, to do the job that that our citizens are asking us to do. But if the council can give that recommendation, that would be wonderful and it would certainly assist us in what we need to do here as a legislature and the city of this committee. So I agree with you 100% on that. And the director, I'm sure, would arrange that. The, the figures and everything would be close. Does that make sense to the committee members? Just to add to that, talking with my local police force, which is small, sending um, their staff off for training creates a hardship on mm -hmm. the force. So I think we should um, have the courtesy of uh, knowing that and of letting them know how many hours it's going to be up front before Exactly. Uh, we mandate this. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> so this has uh, an amendment to 464. Uh, who drafted that? Uh, <laughs> just trying to be transparent. I do can you, can you work with, uh, with the drafter to make yep. that change? Yes. All right. So, um, other thoughts, questions, suggestions, concerns about these issues? Nobody's dying to. All right. So, uh, so how you will work on putting together a, some yeah. language for that proposal, and okay. John will Thank work you. with Bryn to nice. to adapt to the policy uh, language. Mm -hmm. Anything else? All right. I promised you a quick break, and so let's take a ten-minute break and come back to talk about the state ethics commission.